Hey guys, CJ here, PBX How To's. Today I'm going to show you how to add a gateway to an S8300. Now, you can do this with a number of gateways, uh, and I'll show you this as we get in the interface in the PBX, but you can see there's a number of gateways you can add, but here's a few of them that you can see. Now, some assumptions that you have to take, and that is that you have an S8300, as you can see here in this picture, in this picture, in this picture, and this picture here, okay? These are different ones. That's a B, that's a B. This is probably a D or C. This one's definitely a D or C. Most likely a D in this one. Anyway, so uh, how you do this is fairly easy. But I want to, like I said, I want to talk about the assumptions. Obviously, you need an S8300 and you need a gateway minus the G650. That's totally different. Okay. So uh, some assumptions. Let's get those out of the way. The first assumption is that you've already installed System Platform and you've installed the Communication Manager template and you have set all your licensing for the CM, so that way you can get into it like you, like you see right here. Now you're also gonna notice I have no media gateways in here yet. Um, you're gonna also see that I have no IP interfaces in here yet, okay, I think. Yeah, so see, I don't have any IP interfaces, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. The other thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna make sure that you can access the services ports on the gateways themselves um, I'm going to show you the G430. Uh, there's other ways to get into these things, but a console cable will work on all of them. Uh, but the easiest way and the quickest way for this video's sake, I'm going to show you using the services port on the G430. All right, It works on some of the other gateways as well, but again, I'm showing you the quickest and easiest way to do this. Uh, the other thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to be able to access the um, services port using your network connections. Now to do that, you need to open up your network connections. And what you're gonna notice is you can use one connection, but you just have to swap the cables a lot. I use this USB, it's a Belkin, uh, I don't even know, it's like an F4U047. You can get them at Radio Shack, you can get them really anywhere. Um, you can use the, uh, the net Vantage, I can't remember the name of them. But anyway, so I use a USB to ethernet adapter simply just for my network services port, all right? And how you do this is you open up the network port and you go to Internet Protocol version 4 and you set the IP address 192.11.13.5 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.252, all right? Did you get all that? Good. Once you set that, you want to make sure you plug into the services port. And again, it's right here. Let's see if I can zoom in there. Right there, you see it? Services port, all right? So once you're plugged in there, you wanna make sure you can ping it. So I'm gonna do ping 192.11.13.6. That's the address of the services port. You're obviously dot five. It's a two IP network. There can only be two IP addresses in that network, hence the subnet mask. If I do that, you can see that it's pinging okay and now I can access it. Now you can't telnet to it unless you've enabled telnet, um, which I did not. But the best way to do this and the most secure way to do this is use PuTTY. PuTTY's free. I'll put a link in the description. You can go download it. But what you want to do is you want to get into the gateway itself. Whoops. 11. I'm not typing right tonight. 13.6. Hit enter. Let me bring the window over. And you can see I can log in as. What you're going to want to do is you want to log in as root. Okay? And the default password is root on a brand new one. And you can notice how that is because when you type root, it's going to prompt you for a new password. And it has to be, I think, eight characters. So what I do is I just type root root uh, in some kind of uh, fashion. But you can set it to whatever you want it to be. All right, and there you go. Um, I highly suggest you let this script run. And kind of that prerequisite is that you've already IP'd or you have your IP ranges set up. You know what your IP network is going to be. So you want to go ahead and say yes to this. Whoops, not a slash. VLAN, yes. Do yes. What's my IP address of the gateway? 1.184. I'm just making up numbers here. Subnet mask. Default. Just hit enter. Default gateway. Just hit enter. I, uh, no. The MGC controller is going to be 192, 168, 1. 82. Now remember, this is very important. So you set up your MGC controllers. You can go in and set these up later, uh, but you want to make sure you do this so that way you don't have to do it later. So it's already start. It's going to start looking for the uh, the media gateway controller. In this sense, the S8300. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and set this, and we're going to call it G430. 
uh, PBX how to's. Okay, so there you go. So I'm going to say yes, and what this is going to do is it's going to save this into the startup config or the running config, and it's going to reset the gateway. All right, so I'm going to say yes, and you can see beginning the copy operation. When it does that, it's saving it to the memory, and then it's going to reset the gateway. When the gateway comes back up, you should be able to access this, this gateway via the uh, 192.168.1.184, which you see right here, right here, okay? You don't have to go into through one or uh, dot six, but you can if you want. But you can see it already set the name, and these question marks are saying, hey, I can't see the MGC. All right, so we're going to let this reset, and I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, uh, as it's reset, you can see now that it's starting to reply back with the IP address that I set to the gateway. So I'm going to do Control-C here. We're going to back up to here, and I'm going to type the IP address of the gateway. You can see you get the SSH key, and boom, there you go. Login is root, password, and here we are. All right, show PMI. You can see there it is. There's the IP address. Now, what you want to do is you want to sh uh, set your port speeds and negotiation speeds to be full 100 and, and disable the negotiation, okay? And how you do this is the following. All right, so what you have to do first to uh, make sure you set everything, because you remember in the network we have 100 full duplex and um, I'm, I'm making sure that it's locked in that. You notice the auto negotiations turned off. I have it as 100 and full, and that's required for the Avaya gear. So make sure your negotiation is set uh, to no. So what you want to do is you want to do set port negotiation, uh, what is it, 10, 3, disable. Okay, takes a second. Then you get the confirmation saying it's been disabled. Then you want to do the same thing on 4. <laughs> Link negotiation has been disabled, so you can show port. You can see, boom, they're both now disabled. We want to make sure they're both at uh, full speed and 100 meg, all right? So the way you do that, set port speed uh, 10 slash 3, 100 MB. Takes a second. You can see, boom, there, it's set to that. So sh uh, show port. And you can see it's set to 100 meg. Now you need to set the duplex, right? Set port duplex uh, 10, 3, full. Okay. And there you go. Set to 10, full. Show port. And you want to do the same thing for uh, the other link, 10, 4, which it already is. We don't, we don't have to do that. But once you set your IP addresses, go to using the script, Make sure you, you set the negotiation. Make sure you set the duplication, um, and you should be good to go. And what you can see in the background is I have the CLI reference command, and I made sure you guys could see the, the, the bottom here, but you can see the example configuration that they have where you set the port speed. And underneath that is a bunch of related commands that show you the different flow controls, the port negotiation, and things like that. So make sure you take a look at that, all right? Once that's set, you can try pinging the S eighty uh, three hundred, which it's going to ping anyway, but you know it's great to see. So you can see it's replying to you, and you're ready to go. So as long as you're confident that the network is properly configured and ready to go, you can go ahead and try adding these into your PBX. First thing you want to do: add IPI PROCR. Okay. The reason you want to do that is if I do PROC, well, <laughs> I just made a liar of myself. Anyway you got to basically get enough in the command to make sure it understands what you're trying to do. Okay, so if I try to, you know, add IPI, PRO, okay. All right, you caught me in a bad. <laughs> anyway, so add the processor interface, all right? Network region, just select one, and you'll be good. Hit F3 to enter this, and you know it's ready to go. You can do list, IPI, all. You can see there it is. The processor, this is for IPv6, which we don't have enabled. Uh, this is IPv4, and you can see it's on, yes, and it's set to ready to go. Next thing you want to do is you want to add Media Gateway 1. Now, here's where you can see the different Media Gateways you can add. 
the G250, G250 BRI, G250 DTP, blah, 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 blah. But you can see all the different gateways that you can add into this system, all right? Again, you cannot add a G650 because that's done totally differently. Uh, totally differently? Yeah, let me say that 10 times fast. In a different manner, and that's using the Ipsy card. All right, so we're going to type G430, name G430, and you have to put the serial number that matches, all right? The serial number must match. Say it with me. The serial number must match. And the way you find the serial number is type show system in the gateway itself. And here it is. Double click on it. Do a control C to copy. Right click here. Paste. Boom. That way you know you didn't misspell it. All right. Network region one. Recover rule. I just put one. Talk about recovery rules later. Uh, and location one, all right? Okay, we're keeping everything default. I'm going to go down here to the next page. I'm going to type S8300 because that's where the gateway is. I'm sorry. That's where the media server is. It's in slot V1. It can only be in slot V1, FYI. And add your other cards if you have them here. Once I say submit, you're ready to go. If I type list media, you can see it has already registered. Okay, if I bring up the system and do show faults, you can see there are no faults. This gateway is registered. So the two places you can tell, inside the PBX itself, you'll see registered is yes. The gateway type, you're going to see what it's registered to right here. You're going to see what its IP address is, its serial number, and the other way you can tell, take a notice right here. See the G430 PBX how to's, question mark, question mark, question mark. Now it's 001. So you know your gateway is now registered, okay? So that's it. That's how you add a gateway. If you want to add more gateways, you do this same exact thing that I just showed you how to do, okay? Um, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions on this whatsoever, definitely let me know. Uh, let me know in the, in the comment section or drop me a message, all right? But that's how you add gateways in an S8300, all right? I will talk to you later. I'm going to go play with the cats.